I've had the Canon C70 as my primary workhorse for the last year, and it's an amazing camera. I'm gonna talk about all the things I love about it later in this video, but there's some serious flaws with this camera. Let's talk about those flaws now. My first major flaw with the Canon C70 is the overall build quality. It's just not up to snuff when it comes to other Canon cameras. When you look at their mirrorless lineup, like the R5, it's got a really rugged kind of pro kind of body to it. And this thing, even though it's $5,500, feels like a plastic toy. Don't even get me started about this the LCD screen on this camera. I don't understand how Canon shipped this. Look at this, it's so floppy and it's like literally about to break. I have several friends that have had their LCDs break. It seems to be a major flaw with the camera. You can't really see it, but I can feel it right now. It feels like I'm breaking it as I'm flipping it around. There's like little cracks and clicks going on. Canon apparently will fix this and they do seem to reinforce the screen once you receive it back from Canon. My good friend Josh Satin did this and he told me that his camera is much better now but this is unshippable. Canon has known how to do flip screens for a very long time. Even the Canon 90D or the 80D, even the 70D had better flip screens than this. I need to repair this. And boom, now we're shooting with the C70 in 4K 10-bit 422 in C-Log2, which is definitely one of its strengths. But my next gripe with this camera is actually the autofocus performance. Don't get me wrong, the autofocus is amazing on this camera. In fact, we're using the face-only mode, which means when I step out of the frame, it stays where my face was, and then I walk back in and it locks back on my face again. Again, instead of going to the background. I love that feature, but other than face autofocus, this camera is not super good with object focus tracking, unlike the mirrorless cameras. The EOS R, the R5, the R6, all those cameras have amazing object detect focus features, and I wish this camera had that. And it doesn't make any sense, because Canon's the same camera company as Canon. Why aren't the mirrorless camera division people talking to the cinema camera people? It doesn't make any sense. Why can't they just be equally the same? You're lower than a rattler. Oh, come now, my guy. And tankerous friend, we're not so different, you and me. Another thing that I don't like about this camera is the fact that it's a Super 35 sensor with a full frame RF mount on it. At the moment, there's no cropped censored RF lenses. So that means all your lenses that you're gonna buy from Canon that are native RF are full frame. That means you're spending $2,500 on a lens that looks amazing on an R5, for example, because it's getting full 8K resolution of that amazing lens. But on this camera, you're really only using half of what that lens is capable of. The best way to use this camera is to use the Canon Turbo Booster Adapter, which is basically a Metabone Speed Booster. It turns the Super 35 sensor into roughly full frame. That means you're now having to use EF lenses, which are old. The Canon actually has said they've stopped making EF lenses. It's a dead ecosystem. Why would I want to invest my money into a lens ecosystem that is slowly dying over time? Of course, EF is a wonderful lens mount. It's been around forever. There's great lens options, but they're bigger, they're heavier, they're older. The autofocus isn't as good. The um, stabilization. The stabilization isn't as good as the RF mount options. And you also get one of my biggest flaws with this camera as well, purple fringing going on with the turbo booster adapter. Again, my friend Josh Satin that I mentioned earlier, he has experienced this with his turbo booster adapter. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. Everybody who shoots on the C70 with a turbo booster, you can start to see a purple circle in your image. It's not something that I wanna have to work around when I'm spending this kind of money. I wanna use native RF lenses. It's smaller, more compact. Those lenses are amazing with a full frame sensor. I understand this camera is sold as a Super 35 sensor, so I buy it knowing that that's what it is, but that really is one of my major issues with this camera. I really wish it was full frame. Another thing about this camera is the 4K is a bit soft. Now, of course, the 4K is amazing at 10-bit 422 and the color science is great, but it's not as sharp as cameras in the past, like especially the R5, which has an 8K sensor and in their 4K HQ mode, it down reses that 8K image down to 4K. In the past with cameras like the original C100 and the original C300, the sensor in that camera was actually a 4K resolution sensor that then downscaled to 1080p, giving you really sharp, crisp 1080p footage. This camera, even though again, the 4K is amazing, it is a native 4K sensor. It's only eight megapixels actually, to be exact. That means that the image is just exactly what you see straight out of the box. It's 4K, it's not doing any crazy magic to take a larger image and compress it down to a sharper, cleaner 4K. Again, the dynamic range and the overall image of this is fabulous, but it's a little soft. 
a few minor gripes about this camera and things that I wish it had. Like I said earlier, a built-in EVF would be amazing because the LCD is so crappy. SDI out rather than just HDMI. A lot of pros rely on SDI. It's a much more solid connection. It's something I've seen a lot of people wish this camera had. The mounting points on the bottom, though they're great, are kind of awkward. There's three of them and there's a three eighths right in the middle. That means that if you want to use a quarter 20 mount, which a lot of things like a gorilla pod or switch pod have built in, you have to screw it in off to the side. So I end up using a little adapter thing when I'm using a gorilla pod or something like that. And lastly, I know it's a stretch, especially for a cinema camera. I wish this camera had IBIS built in, in body image stabilization. I know a lot of cinema shooters don't like IBIS, but I personally love it. And I think a camera like this would actually be really cool with built in IBIS. The way we're shooting right now, Connor is holding the camera with nothing else. And though this camera does have digital IS, it's nowhere near as good and stable as the IBIS that I've seen from Canon and especially from Olympus, like the camera that we use. Let's talk about the things I love about this camera because there are a lot. First off, the image quality, of course, is amazing. The DGO sensor, which is a dual gain output sensor, is kind of magical. It's basically exposing for the highlights and the shadows and combining that into one image. This goes away when you go into the high frame rate mode. Shooting in the native ISO, which is 800 on this camera, you can get roughly 16 stops of dynamic range in C-Log2. Secondly, the built-in NDs. Of course, every film maker out there talks about this, but it's true. Once you have it, it's hard to go back. Of course, if you're using a mirrorless camera, you could use something like VND for ease of use, but you're going to sacrifice a little bit of image quality. There's some color shifts going on and it's basically a polarizer. So it's taking out reflections in the shot. Nothing can ever beat having built in NDs that are just straight NDs and having to carry around a bunch of filters when you're shooting is a big pain in the neck. Having it built in makes you super spoiled. The audio controls on this are also pretty excellent. It doesn't have full XLR inputs, but it does have two mini XLR ports as well as a mic input, giving you four total audio inputs. The little dials on the back are also really tactile and nice. And even though the body is a little cheap and plasticky, it's chunky, but in a good way. I think overall the layout is great. The buttons are nice. It's a little heavy. I do have to use an easy rig when I'm shooting long shoots, but overall it's a nice form factor. The screen doesn't get in the way of the audio inputs and the HDMI. I love the little handle, even though I've heard rumors that it can get a little jank. The build quality aside, I think the overall layout of it is pretty solid. However, for YouTube work and the type of work that we do, I think a hybrid camera is still the better option. But if you're a full-time filmmaker, freelance producer, and you need a solid workhorse camera, especially if you're coming from a Canon camera like the C100, this to me is a no-brainer. The C70 overall is a great workhorse if you love Canon and if you want the amazing color science and the features that come with this beast. Make sure to subscribe. I'm back. This is my channel. See you next time. <laughs> Why did I have a lisp?